through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by the director and star of Grassroots, Stephen Gyllenhaal. And Jason Biggs? No, I'm the director and star. No, I'm the star and the director. No, he just said Stephen Chunhall, the director and star. Right, but I directed this. Yes. I, fi I figured I it was. starred in it. Yes. I, fi I figured there was some amazing CGI work going on, <laughs> so, you know, at the very least. This is the story of the 2001, 2001. City, City Council campaign of Grant Cogswell. And I got to say, for me, it was kind of a trippy experience because I know Grant Cogswell. But my introduction to him was I actually worked on his film, ah, Cthulhu, yeah. which came out in like 2005, 2006. So I didn't know anything about the monorail campaign. That sort of was filled in a little bit after the fact. So this was kind of a different spin on somebody I already know. I've heard stories about that movie, though. I have, oh, there were some people. There were some people that worked on Grassroots in the production of Grassroots. Who almost died? I heard. <laughs> Was that true? No. no. Oh. Who worked on? Uh, is it Cthulhu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who worked on Cthulhu and yeah. just had the strangest stories. Oh, <laughs> yes. Politics and... After this is over, maybe I could relay some stories. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience, and very interesting dude. I mean, the first thing that obviously has to come to mind is what made you guys want to make this movie. I mean, there's probably any number of city council races across America that have kooky characters involved with them that you could probably make a story about. But what was it about well, our first, little story? I went through thousands of case histories <laughs> across the country. I figured it would be that. Thousands of them <laughs> trying to find the campaign that would capture what I wanted to capture. And I almost gave up. I almost threw in the towel. And then I happened to be in New York at Nation Books, and I saw this book called Zion Check for President. And just seeing the name Zion Check for President made me go, Catches your attention. I think this might be the movie I want to make next. And out of a deep, deep depression rose up this idea for this movie. If you believe that story... <laughs> I have a bridge I can... No, it, it actually, I read the book, and I and I went... Uh, I had you going there, though. No, well, no, it's, it's just, I mean, it's it's one of those things that, you know, knowing Grant, and I don't know Phil, but, like, if we, there's I might anything, be like, almost as, uh, as obsessed, in a way. Well, I mean, I was just going to say, you know, they can spin quite a tale. I've seen Grant <laughs> tell quite a tale in time, so, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you... No, know. actually, I read the book, Zion Check for President, and right away felt there was something about the relationship between these two characters, which moved me and I loved the idea that these two sort of white slacker dudes who totally inappropriately took on a kind of a, you know a, a liberal you know income black incumbent and and what in the world are they doing it makes no sense at all and the film slowly begins to make sense it's hilarious it's hilarious in all the wrong ways and then slowly it becomes right and that's what I found well, I mean very you, you didn't you didn't just get involved like this was i believe the first thing you were involved as a writer on since what homegrown yeah is what, right. I, what i believe and that was 14 years ago so this is something that definitely caught your passion was it just the underdog story is it everyone loves an underdog story or what exactly well, i love politics and and i think politics you know are very serious i mean it's really the foundation of this country and the, you know the, i think the survival of the country but it's also hilarious stuff and and I think uh, and I do think I mean you know Grant Grant is a wild candidate now I've been around the country with the film a little bit since we premiered it here but we've shown it a couple other places testing and doing things like that so we saw a lot of and talked with a lot of people involved with politics and they said you know candidates often are really out there they're very driven you know strange characters that you have to kind of straighten out and straighten up and clean up and put out there because um, who wants to run for these offices? Who wants to do that? My, my opinion is everyone should run for office. Every single person out there should at some point in their life run for office. It's what the forefathers well, wanted. I, I'm, already, I'm already working on that. I, 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 I planned for Spencer Forenshari and 
2020, the vision is clear <laughs> because that's at the point at which I'm 35 and old enough to run for president. There so, you go. You know, I, I've, I've been working on that for, I don't know. You might want to start with a little bit lower office first. Swing no, I fences. think, no, I think right for the presidency. Yeah, yeah. Right for the presidency. <laughs> now, I'll catch him. No, we're, we're talking about the presidency of, of uh, like a club or like the America? Well, to be fair, I saw a documentary at SIF this year, which was about a guy who bought an ambassadorship in Liberia. So I figure, you know, anything's possible. Wow. Do well, you have enough money to buy the presidency? Uh, I, I mean, this is Seattle. I could roll over to Paul Allen or somebody. You know, yeah. Bill Gates is around here. There's there's backers to be found. It, good I mean, luck. I, I, good luck. It, it's funny you talk <laughs> about, you know, this is a commie, and it definitely is. But one of the funny things to me was that you were kind of the straight man, and you've kind of made a career of being funny. Was that something you wanted to do, or why exactly did you think about being Grant in the movie, or was that ever on the table? Like... I don't think that ever was on the table. Certainly not for me. You, it was never no, talked about. Me, right? no, no. no, I I I read it with with Phil in mind. I, you know, for for me, the 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 most attractive thing was this story. I mean, it it's it, you know Stephen wrote this screenplay based on loosely based on on Phil's book, but obviously based on their their lives and and this and this campaign that was just to me kind of a really perfect story. I, I loved um, this sort of bromance aspect to it, the David versus Goliath. It's got these themes that are, while it's such a, such a uh, localized film, you know, it's very Seattle specific, but it's very broad, I think, in its, um, in its sort of thematic, uh, you know, appeal, hopefully. And um, I just really enjoy the story. And as far as the role is concerned, yes, that was something for me that... I was excited about that. Excited me about the role. It's something that you know. I still get to use um, some of the sort of the comedic, you know, muscles that I've exercised right. in the past. There's still stuff, but it's not. It's much more subtle, and it and it was much more challenging because there are dramatic moments. There is a lot of and Stephen, you know, Stephen really pushed me and really. Um, you know, quieted me down. I mean, it's a really a lot of, it's a performance and, and all of the performances, you know, are sort of built on subtleties and then you're allowed to, you know, I mean, Grant in particular can go to sort of a more loose cannony type place, but I was required to, yeah, sort of be the sort of voice of reason to his, um, to his craziness, if you will. And I know that, that was definitely part of the appeal for me. And I mean, you're also like a slacker, as he said, but you're the one who's sort of forced to really grow. I mean, Grant, <laughs> you could argue how much Grant has grown up to this very day. <laughs> but your character, I mean, because of what he does, you're put in the position of having to sort of be the adult in the campaign in a lot of ways. And that's sort of an interesting transition to watch. Yeah, no, you're absolutely. That's actually a great observation. It, it really is. It's um, uh, I, Phil's arc through this is is amazing. I mean, it really is. He really does grow up, um, and uh, I think he learns a lot not only about himself, but you know about what about the what 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 you can do. I mean, when we meet him, he's he's pretty hopeless. You know, he's he's yeah. he's he's. Well, Stephen described it earlier that he's he's cynical and, and cynicism comes from people with hope and when that hope has been defeated. I think that's a really interesting way to describe it. So I wouldn't say he's hopeless, but he's at a point where his hope has been crushed. And then he's re-inspired, you know, by this by this crazy guy, by this campaign, by politics, by by the by like, oh my god, I can make a difference. It's kind of a fun thing. There's an interesting sort of spin to the whole opening you know where he's down too though and when you're getting fired from the stranger there's a definite comedic element to that that i don't know if anywhere but seattle is going to appreciate like oh you write for a shitty yeah, yeah, newspaper yeah. there was a big there was a big laugh yesterday when i when i'm uh talking to lauren ambrose um <laughs> emily and and uh, i got go, you know fired from the stranger it doesn't get any lower than that you know and, and I, there was a big laugh in the theater and <laughs> and, I, and i and i as i said i played a few pl other places it doesn't get a laugh there yeah but there are places where it definitely gets you know right from the start you start to get laughs well, it's, it's just a nice thing you know being from seattle to get sort of that wink nod sort yeah. of mm -hmm. uh aspect and one of the things that i was wondering about is just the whole process of putting it in seattle in general i mean this is something that you probably very easily could have shot in any number of other locations but you chose 
to film it where it was originally based. And you guys had Grant and Phil sort of around the film. What is that like, A, in making it where it was originally occurred, and B, to have the actual people who the story happened to sort of watching over you and sort of being able to guide you through their experiences during it. You know, over the years I've done a lot of a lot of television and television's often um, based on real people's lives. Not nearly as fun as these. Some of them are tragic stories, you know, and I, I think one of the things that's, that's fascinating to, to, to experience is that this is not what happened. This is a movie. And, you know, and I think what is fascinating also for these real people, Grant and Phil, is that whatever really happened in their lives from all their friends point of view it will be what they see in the movies it won't be whatever was so there's a wonderfully surreal thing that you have to deal with about what is reality and what isn't but i think when you're making a movie you want to set it in as much reality as you can i i felt from the very start i was going to shoot this in seattle I, and i and i was going to use a total seattle crew and i was going to use as many actors as i could in Seattle, partially because we had no money, and I was going to deal with that. But that's a wonderful discipline to have. Yeah. I mean, Hitchcock's, for instance, The Lady Vanishes, was all shot on a stage. I remember thinking it's one of the great films because he was so constrained in what he could do. And it was on a train, it was all shot on a stage. I've always thought that that is a great metaphor for a lot of these movies. Discipline kind of gives you, and, and constraints often gives you real creative, you know, creative... You have to come up with creative, you know, uh, sort of answers to all of that. So I loved having to, having to really work with all the real locations. We tried to use all the locations in Seattle, and I think it makes a huge difference. Oh no, I agree. I, th I think it was amazing. I mean, I, I wondered about for you, and I mean, Grant, I don't, I don't know what your process was like for something like American Pie, but to have, I mean. I would think to actually be in the places where an event occurred and be able to talk to the person you're trying to capture it really might influence the way you take on a part. I mean, it'd be very easy to just read it on a page and be like, okay, you know, in this scene, Phil's going to be like, boop, 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 doo. Yeah, that, no, that's true. There was, well, and, and actually, I didn't meet Phil until a little, a little, filming had commenced already, but, but being in the city for sure, it's, it was a huge part of it. No, with, without a doubt, that was a, uh, I was a, I was a big element. It definitely does influence your performance, but really it was really all that it was there on the page, but uh, you know, but, but that was because Steven did such a, he wrote such a great script and he was, Steven was so informed and, and, uh, knew what he wanted from this relationship and from my performance and trusted that I could get there that for me it was really just about you know taking direction <laughs> frankly well it was more than that but <laughs> but, but you know that was that, that influenced me more than anything else right. but 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 being in this world it definitely adds a sort of a realness and and if anything it just makes it more fun I mean you know there's it, it doesn't feel as sort of forced you know you're on a sound stage in Vancouver trying to shoot a movie that is so clearly where Seattle is another character you know it's a yeah, yeah. it's a weird thing and you know ultimately I guess you would describe this or at least I've described it to people I know as sort of an underdog story in a lot of ways and it, I mean what do you do to sort of combat those cliches about underdog movies because there's I mean everyone goes into those films with their preconceptions of like oh you know there's the big corporation trying to smack them down or whatever do you do you just sort of try and keep it as honest as possible? Do you try and focus more on the characters themselves? What do you do to sort of make it not feel like a film that could fall into line cliche. with a million other ones? Well, I mean, I think the way you avoid falling into a cliche is you make it very, very, very specific. And that's why setting it in a real location, um, being very attentive to detail, um, really takes the cliche out of it. You know, I think also there's a lot of complication, a lot of complications around, you know, um, you know, g Grant's, you know, not the most likable character in the world. So it's not like you have Sylvester Stallone as the underdog in Rocky. You've got a much more complicated character, so you're forced to kind of circle him more carefully. I think also right away the audience is going more with Phil oh. and who Phil is. So he's not the underdog, he's cynical. So you've got a cynical guy... And a guy who's kind of loony, going against you know, and going against a black candidate. And I have to say, one of the things I was very intrigued with 
going on underneath the surface was a, the little level of discomfort about two white slacker guys going after what's, you know, he's basically a, a liberal, you know, black candidate. What is that going to do? And I think we want to walk into that, that area. And I think what's wonderful is the true story. The true story resolves that. That wasn't anything done with the narrative. That was really the real characters of Richard MacGyver, Grant Cogswell, and Phil Campbell addressing those issues in really human specific ways so that in fact it's a much more complicated film on top of all of that you keep looking for the funny moments you know that's the, that's the key to all of this is you gotta keep laughing through all of this stuff that was one of the primary challenges of this is to walk into some complicated area but keep them laughing that was fun what about the aspect of it being on some level a political movie I mean, I wouldn't necessarily describe it as a movie with an agenda on it. I mean, in some ways it's kind of pro-monorail, but that's, that, that boat's kind of sailed, at least for Seattle. Well, maybe, maybe it'll sell maybe, back. Yeah, I, think I it, mean, uh, I think one of the things we're looking for in this is those of you out there who want to see the monorail back in your neighborhood, think again oh, I, I, and see Grassroots I thought it was at really, the Harvard exit. June twenty second. It was really funny to sort of get the perspective of the light rail. That was the one thing that be, because we've been down the light rail for I don't know five, six, whatever years at this point to sort of see that sort of attack, whatever you want to call it, light rail. But in terms of the political, maybe my question was more like, do you think about that kind of stuff when you make a film? Because I imagine you know, it's very easy for an actor to be typecast. So if there's somebody out there who was right wing or something like that they'd be like oh that Jason Biggs he was in a liberal movie I don't want him on my film <laughs> do you think about that kind of stuff or do you just sort of do it let the chips fall where they may and well first of all let me just say the chances of me working with a really right wing director is probably slim to none <laughs> no that's I mean, not true maybe Kirk Cameron with a right wing actor I, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm open to it you know I, 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 <laughs> and if there's a right wing investor out there I'm ready to work with them too and, and in fact in some ways a lot of and I have a couple of right-wing friends, believe it or not, really like the movie because, in fact, there is a level of just democracy, and and, and I and I do I'm totally progressive. You read any of my Huffington, you know, whatever, you know. It's like, but I also think it's the right of everyone to be able to speak their mind, you know. And I think some people are out of their minds, but nonetheless, they still have a right to speak it. And and I think one of the things the film is trying to do is go just everybody. Let's be aware that everyone else is a human being too. You know that everyone tries to. I think the problem with the um, underdog movie is that you then make the guy at the top, you know, an evil villain. Now, I have a lot of problems with some of the guys at the top, but in this case, it's far more complicated. You could also make the underdog an evil villain if you go down the route of something like Warrior. Perhaps yeah, yeah, you could yeah. be badass like Tom Hardy. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> could be. What do you mean? Am I not? <laughs> if, if you were a little bit more, you know, violent during the movie, we could we could oh, get that up. Director's yeah. cut. I'm just. Throwing but in terms out of ideas. physique and such, yeah, I'd I'm say it's it, pretty it, much. No yeah. question about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Six half strange. dozen. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like looking in a mirror. In fact, you won't believe when you take your clothes off in this movie the difference oh. between when you do it in grassroots in the director's cut, which will be in the DVD. And American Pie, there's, it's, it's astonishing. I'm counting on like the NC-17 <laughs> version of Grassroots at the yeah. very least. So the film's called Grassroots, about a grassroots campaign. What exactly are you guys doing to get the word out? I mean, I understand it's a fairly grassroots publicity oh, kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is it like in terms of trying to spread the word for this movie? Well, the, the biggest thing that we're doing, the most important thing we're doing, is that after each showing of the movie in the theaters we're going to have a grassroots candidate get up and talk for five to ten minutes. Wow, that's cool. And then go from the screening to, going from the showing to a nearby, well, of course, in Seattle, coffee shop. And whoever in the audience wants to can continue the conversation, can even start to work for them. That's amazing. That's really so cool. So that that's the whole idea. And that's, in a way, the major part of this of the, of the campaign of the movie is spotlighting grassroots politics. In fact, we have a placard. I don't, I don't think we have it here now, but it's laugh, cry, vote for the little guy. And that's going to be our battle cry all the way through this. You know, don't worry about, don't worry about, you know, Obama and Mitt Romney right now, or even the, the, the you know, the senatorial races. Look down the level where you're, where there are people who actually might visit your house. Who are in your neighborhood? Who care about well, what you care? Obama about. comes to my house, but but that's a separate. No, that's a different thing. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, not everyone saying. gets visits from yeah, by yeah, Obama. Clooney fundraiser yeah, parties. And stuff. Yeah. Well, I have. I don't go. To, I don't go to Clooney's. He, Clooney comes to mine, 
But sure, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go on. It's, it's, it's interesting. I'm, well, no, no, no. I'm just saying. What I'm about just Mitt saying. Romney? Has he stopped by too? He would probably. Well, they're all going to stop by. He can't get by. through the fence, I imagine. You know. Yeah, yeah. But he still but he, he calls me Jason up. Jason Biggs. <laughs> other than him and the rest of the people in the crew, and most of the crew are you know not as you know, don't don't live the way Jason lives. Um, they, they, Beyond we, his means. Yes. <laughs> I think everyone lives there. there. <laughs> <laughs> but so the people there there will be. Candidates out there will be spotlighting that first in Seattle, then Portland, then hopefully New York, and then hopefully across the country. We've got to get people in the theaters to see this movie here in in Seattle first. Well, that's a great question. Where can people find more information out about this film and where to find it? Grassrootsthefilm.com. Put a little banner down Grassrootsthefilm.com. there. Grassrootsthefilm.com. And Twitter. Uh, there's a Twitter too. Twitter. There's Twitter. There's at Facebook. Grassroots Film. At Grassroots at, Film. At, that's right. At Grassroots Film. And grassrootsthefilm.com and Facebook and all that. You got all the information. We're at Harvard Exit. We'll be hopefully more theaters shortly after that. But that's where you can really see what's going on. You can see some of the candidates that we're spotlighting. You can, and we're going to actually also go door to door. We're going to, we're going to actually wow. keep Jason up. He's going to go door to door. I just got to change my sneak. I got to put on my better sneakers. Yeah, sandwich yeah. board or something. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And and also uh, we haven't really gotten into this, but one of the things about Grant. In the movie, as opposed to in reality, because as it says, most of this is true in the movie. Um, he's into wearing polar bear, a polar bear outfit. Yes, a great part of the movie. So yes, I, hear, right. I hear there is a polar bear lurking. And out there, there is somewhere. a polar bear out there lurking. He is going to be in the streets of Seattle. You can photograph him, tweet your photograph with yourself with him, and we're going to have some kind of prize. Maybe um, you'll be invited to. Jason's house. My next know, fundraiser with, with Clooney. Yeah. That's right, with Clooney. Clooney and Obama. And Obama and Mitt Romney. They're going to all. They're be all going to be there. I'm the only one that can bring that disparate group of people together. It's, it's incredible. It's astonishing. It's yeah. astonishing. And so, what about in terms of you guys? Is there anything else coming up that you want people to know about, or place where they can keep up to date with what you guys have going on? And well, he's all over the place. Well. At Steph, Steve, Steve, Steph, Gyllenhaal. Because somebody S- stole my name. I mean, son really? of a <laughs> bitch. S T E P H P H Gyllenhaal, and that uh, is and his Twitter. Biggs and Jason. mine is at Biggs Jason. Just to change everybody. Confuse Just to them. confuse everybody. Yeah. And uh, that's where you can keep up with the goings on. But uh, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, you know. Stumping for this for a little bit. Yeah, I think they're both. We're both doing other things, lots of other projects. But right now, there's a 2012 election. Right now, yes. grassroots is walking right into it. And I think the thing that we want to do more than anything right now, and everyone in the country should do, is really what is democracy? What is democracy about? And it is a laughing matter. It is. It remains a laughing matter. Democracy is about everyone going out there and taking part, being active citizens. Don't be cynical. Go see the movie. Watch. Jason Biggs' character, Phil Campbell, go from being cynical to being wildly sexy. He drinks the Kool-Aid. <laughs> He's always wildly sexy. but, yeah. but, but you I feel like out, we've covered that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see the movie. And, and, and you, you know, the wonderful thing I've seen at SIF when we had three screens is people walked out smiling. Walked out smiling about politics. And I think that's really worth it for an audience. Is to at this this year to come out smiling about politics is is really something makes me feel very good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm expecting the next one to be Grassroots to Cthulhu. So if you need any <laughs> advisors for that, let me know. Uh, thank you guys both so much for coming. Uh, definitely go check out the film. I've seen it. It's entertaining. And uh, check out more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thanks, thank babe. you. Pleasure. <laughs> Two more thousand can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.